We don't need Kenya president anymore. We don't need Roto. We are dying in high cost of living. This is the voice of Kenya citizens. Ruto must go. We need change. Tensions arising in Kenya as citizens storms parliament over anti-tax bill. They burned part of Kenya's parliament, and about 10 people were reportedly shot dead by police. More than 30 people were wounded, about 13 people with live bullets. One person shot dead was wrapped in a Kenyan flag and carried away. The people of Kenya are upset with President Ruto Williams, calling him to step down as the president. The people of Kenya said, We don't need Ruto anymore. He must go. We are dying in high cost of living. He must step down immediately. This has called for controversies across the globe. President William Ruto has been in public office for a long time. He was first elected to Kenya's parliament in 1997. He eventually rose to the position of deputy president in 2013, before becoming president in 2022. His tenure of office as the president has caused a lot of disaster among the people. They cry for high cost of living, the cry for high taxation, and more. Protesters had demanded that legislators vote against the bill imposing new taxes on a country, where frustrations over the high cost of living have simmered. Youth who had voted President William Ruto into power with cheers for his promises of economic relief have taken to the streets to object to the pain of reforms. But lawmakers voted to pass the bill, then fled through a tunnel as protesters, many of the youth, outmaneuvered police to enter. The fire was later put out. Amendments to the bill look set to be approved was a plan to introduce a 16% sales tax on bread and 25% duty on cooking oil. There was also a planned increase in the tax on financial transactions as well as a new annual tax on vehicle ownership amounting to 2.5% of the value of the vehicle. The government said it was dropping these measures amid a public outcry. Mr. Ruto has argued that compared to some other African countries, Kenya has a relatively low tax rate, but this did not convince many. Everyday conversations which were already dominated by the pain of taxation have now reached a crescendo. Gunshots and the firing of tear gas has been heard all day. BBC reporters have seen bodies on the street and witnessed police throwing tear gas at protesters. Some MPs reportedly sheltered in the Parliament's basement after they passed a finance bill that seeks to introduce new taxes. Protests are also taking place in other parts of Kenya as anger surges over the new measures. Police and demonstrators clashed and five people have been killed, according to the Kenya Medical Association. Despite the assurance by the government that the right to assembly would be protected and facilitated, today's protests have spiraled into violence. Human rights observers and medical officers have reported several incidents of human rights violation, the statement said. I would like to show you some videos about the current state in Kenya as the people complaints and asking the president to step down. But before we go into the videos, kindly subscribe and like the video for more updates. So this is not a matter that uh, Kenya Kwanza and uh, Mwishmua William Ruto can take lightly. They have said Ruto must go. It is not as Mio saying so. It is the people of Kenya saying Ruto must go. And so the killings we are saying must stop. But let's talk about the situation qua ground. The proposed finance bill, by now, you should have read it. We are set to face an uphill battle, particularly the young people who are already trying so hard to get onto their own two feet in these hard economic times. It's heartbreaking in 2024 to be going one step forward and two steps back. Sanitary pads, which we know were already widely inaccessible, are subject to a VAT of 16%. That same VAT applies to diapers or and even that loaf of bread. Oh, and that Mercedes G wagon you're saving up for? Here comes a yearly tax on its value. Not to mention the tax on digital creators, imported phones, and even donations and charity. How do you tax kindness, man? So this Father's Day, I'm calling out to our members of parliament. 75% of you are men, fathers, and father figures who are supposed to understand the importance of our prosperous future. We entrusted our futures to you. So treat us like your own sons and daughters and honor the pivotal role that fathers play in our society. Use this Father's Day as an opportunity to act as our protective father and reject the Finance Bill of 2024. Patriots, comrades, 
revolutionaries, Gen Zs, and millennials. Good morning. I'm thrilled by the revolutionary energy on Kenyan streets and villages. Ruto has failed spectacularly in two years. He keeps complaining about the money that Uru Kenyatta stole, but we elected him to bring Uru Kenyatta to account and bring back the money so that the public debt and infrastructure and development can happen. He has brought a bill, Finance Bill 2024, which was drafted in Washington, D.C. by the IMF and the World Bank. He's become a poodle, a stooge, a slave of the Western imperialists. We are sovereign. Gen Zs and the millennials have decided to take back our country. We say bravo, occupy everywhere. Zakayo must come down from his patch. We are going back to elections. Kenyans will choose whoever they want. A person with integrity, with capacity and ability and acumen to restore sanity, to bring services to the people, to deliver what it is that Kenyans have been lacking for 60 years. We've never had independence. This is going to be the first one. Freedom is coming. Viva! I want to condemn in the strongest terms possible what this government has been doing to harass very innocent, peaceful protesters that are simply saying they don't want Finance Bill 2024. I want to condemn the killing of innocent youth that are simply coming out to say they don't like where our country is headed. I strongly condemn the holding incognito of young activists. You know, people pick them up and take them to unknown destinations. And we have to keep going to social media to look for them. This is embarrassing. We don't want to go back to the dark days of this country. I want to condemn the harassment and the attempted uh, kidnapping of Boniface Mwangi and several other activists. We refuse to be cowed. So I want to call upon every young person and every Kenyan of goodwill to come out tomorrow in big numbers to say enough is enough. We want a brand new Kenya. We want to take our power back. We want our country back. We do not want Finance Bill 2024, period. And any attempt to muzzle people's voices will only attract more wrath. So I urge this government and Ruto to stop harassing the young people, to stop harassing Kenyans because you'll only incur more wrath. So together we stand, we say no to the finance bill and we say long live Kenya and long live, long live the people of Kenya. What happens if the finance bill of 2024 fails to pass? That is, if MPs vote to reject the bill, what will be the impact? Some people have had the misconception that the government will shut down or will be unable to spend more money after the lapse of the current financial year on June 30th. Now, the finance bill is different from the appropriations bill, which is the one that allows money to leave the consolidated fund after the lapse of the current financial year. So if the finance bill fails, the status quo remains. The appropriations bill allows the government to spend money that, ha that is in the consolidated fund for every financial year, meaning it must be passed it, uh, before June 30th for money to be released from the exchequer after June 30th, that is between July 1, 2024 up to July, June 30th of 2025. The finance bill is different because it's a set of amendments to the existing laws that seek to raise govern, government revenues. So if the finance bill fails, then the status quo remains in that the current laws remain as they are and the, those laws will still be used, for example, uh, the income tax, uh, the VAT Act will still be used as it is without 
the only the only thing that will be different is the government will not collect more taxes as had been proposed in the finance bill actually treasury already wrote parliament on wednesday june that 19 informing them of the budget cut that they would have to make that is they will have to drop 200 billion which was to be raised from the uh, from the tax proposals in the finance bill that 200 billion will be cut from the existing budget and some of the biggest casualties include parliament will lose about 3.1 billion that is 2.7 billion which is allocated to recurrent expenditure such as allowances and salaries and another 450 million allocated to CDF. Another big casualty will be the JSS program, that is the junior secondary school teachers who are supposed to be hired on permanent and pensionable basis. They will lose all the 18 billion that had been assigned for that purpose. Another big casualty is the cash transfers for senior citizens under the Linda Jamie program. They will lose 5 billion allocated for that. In the letter from the Treasury CS, they say, they will cut uh, the, co the funds allocated to the, cherry, the coffee cherry fund, meaning farmers will lose about 1 billion that was supposed to pay their debts. Sugar farmers will lose another 1.7 billion that was uh, been uh, budgeted for paying their debts. If this video was informative and helpful to you, kindly subscribe and like the video for more updates. This episode is brought to you by Joy Ideas.